So there are there are films, and then there's cinema, and then there are directors, and then there are masters of cinema. And what we all just saw, checked off on both of those boxes, it's unbelievable. If there is a better film uh, this decade, I will eat my shoes. You have my word. Uh, we've never done an audience award at Beyond. We've never done an award at Beyond Fest. We're, we're that ill prepared. Um, but I think. If we're ever going to do an audience award, we should probably do it now. So who thinks this is the audience award best film of the festival? Uh, I want to bring up to the stage uh, Miss Jenny Mato. She's going to she's going to model. Thank you. And um, we've got some props. We've got some friends. Um, uh, one more ask of everyone in the audience, we all still have our glasses, because we'll need our glasses. Um, because we're going to recreate this, but we're going to recreate it with um, our friends and then uh, a very special filmmaker. Um, he's made incredible movies, a number of masterpieces. This is obviously his latest. Uh, it gives me the greatest pleasure of ever being on this stage to introduce the man himself, Mr. Bong Joon Ho. Oh. That's your mark right there. Yeah, that's yours. Uh, Sharon is a, is a tra translator tonight. She'll be working with Bong and with Jen. And with that, I'm going to pass you the mic. And thank you for coming. How about another round of applause for Director Bong? All the way from Austin, Texas, which is where you flew in from today. <laughs> it's very crazy. I was in Texas this morning. <laughs> now you can get crazy here at the office. Well, we have to first take a minute to, I mean, just acknowledge that what Christian just said, basically every movie you've made is a masterpiece. <laughs> Your first movie, Barking Dogs Never Bite. Memories of Murder. The Host, Mother, Snowpiercer, Okja, and now Parasite, which won off a historic Congo at Cannes. How does it feel to, to, to come to this moment in your life and your career with these stories under your belt? So it's been pretty hectic every day. I feel like I've been tied up to uh, a rope and being dragged around on a train. And it's been pretty hectic every day. But it's been a really enjoyable and fun experience. Um, I've had the opportunity to screen this film um, in other countries before this, like in Germany, Sydney, and France. And I've noticed that the audience has shown pretty similar reactions, and I've been really wondering why. Mm. <laughs> How would you describe that? I mean, the the it, it does feel strangely universal for fe feeling, um, at the same time, very specific to Korean society, to the Korean culture. Um, but was that by design? Did you write this hoping that an international audience would be able to relate to it? Actually, I, I didn't know. It was just the movie is very, this movie is full of very Korean details and Korean nuances. 
don't know, maybe 그것도 지금 지구 전체가 다 그냥 나라가 하나인 것 같아요. 그 아까도 얘기했지만 자본주의라는 국가 하나인 것 같아요. 그래서 한국이고 미국이고 어디고 다 똑같은 것 같아요. I think anywhere in the world, um, we're currently living in just one big nation of capitalism. And I think that's why the response has been pretty similar across both of us. Well, Director Bob, you, you said that the idea for this, for Parasite, the story, first started germinating in your brain about five years ago when you were finishing Snowpiercer, which has some overlapping themes. Do you feel like this came out of an outgrowth of, of telling that story somehow? 설국열차지 후반 작업 포스트 프로덕션 할 때였죠. 그러니까 설국열차도 사실 뭐 가난한 자 부자가 이렇게 나오잖아요. 뭐 2층과 지상과 지하가 아니라 이제 기차 한 뒷간으로 나눠져 있었죠. So I first came up with this idea during the post-production of Snowpiercer, and Snowpiercer also features the rich and the poor, um, but instead of being overground and underground, it's the tail cars and the front cars. Maybe at the time, I, it was, <laughs> I spent very hard time making those 26, no, 24 different train sections. <laughs> just, just traveling with the limited budget, so, so many different cars. 그래서 아마 스트레스를 받았나 봐요. 그래서 이 부자와 가난한 자 얘기지만 집두 개에서 다 찍는 영화를 만들어야지. 집두 개면 다 끝나는 거야. 스물 네 개가 아니야. 뭐 이렇게 생각했던 거야. Because I was so stressed with creating those uh, 24 cars of that train, um, I was very stressed. So I wanted to shoot the story of the rich and poor in just two houses and have that be it. <웃음> So much easier, right? Upstairs, downstairs, down, down the stairs. Uh, but how does how does a story take take hold with you when you come to a point when an idea that you have in your in your mind is the story that you have to tell next, that you have to write next? How does that actually unfold? Do you write the characters first? Do you have the the structure in mind first? 처음에 이렇게 침투한다는 개념만 있었어요. 그래서 제목도 기생충이었는데 침투한다. 저 저도 대학교 때 여기 주인공처럼 과외를 많이 했었어요. 과외 아르바이트를 많이 했었는데 실제로 되게 부자 집에서 과외를 해본 적이 있었어요. 거기에 이렇게 뭔가 이렇게 어쩔 수 없이 이렇게 남의 사생활을 엿보게 되는 듯한 그런 느낌이 있거든요. 그래서 내가 이렇게 어떤 다른 사람의 집으로 침투해 들어가는 느낌 같은 게 되게 묘했었는데. 그런 걸 가지고 되게 좀 재밌게 해보고 싶었던 기억이 나고요. So for Parasite, I first came up with this idea of infiltration, and that's why the title ended up being Parasite. Um, but when I was in college, I often tutored uh, uh, as a part-time job, and I actually tutored for a rich, very rich family. And I got the sense that inevitably I ended up peeping into the private lives of complete strangers. And I remember getting this very eerie feeling that I was infiltrating their home. And so I always wanted to tell a fun story about that. I was in a school at the school. I was a young man. 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 되게 인상 그런 기억. 사우나라는 뭔가 되게 사적인 공간인데 그런 걸 봤던 기억들. So at the time I taught uh, a middle school boy and I ended up getting fired just two months later. Um, but the boy took me to the second floor and showed me uh, their private sauna in the home and I very vividly remember just uh, getting a chance to look into such a private space. And he was very proud of it. <laughs> But that but I was very shocked. It's a sauna in the house. Such a rich family. So, yeah. 이런 것들이 뭐 이런 기억들부터 해서 여러 가지 그래서 그 과외 선생뿐 아니라 뭐그 부자 집에 들어가서 할수 있는 직업들이 많이 있잖아요. 운전기사 또뭐 하우스메이드 뭐 가정부 이런 식으로 해서 그걸 하나의 가족 단위로 해서 다다 다 들어가 보자. 나만 들어가는 게 아니라 그런 생각을 하게 돼. 
So from these memories, I thought of all the different jobs that would require you go into the rich house, like being the driver, the housekeeper. Um, and so I wanted to tell a story of just an entire family going into this house as one singular unit. But you, everyone already watched the movies. So I can say very freely that there is a third family. This is not not story of two families. In the, in the marketing process, we always this rich and poor, but. Actually, in the movie, there is a third family, the couple in the basement. 그, 그 마지막 지하실에 관한 모든 것들은 이제 몇 년간 전혀 그 생각이 없었고, 실제 이제 스크립트를 시나리오 쓰는 마지막 3개월에 다 한꺼번에 나왔어요. So for the several years that I was developing this story, I actually um, did not think of that last couple in the basement. It all came to me during the last three months of the actual script writing process. I wonder, you're not still in touch with the family who you tutored, are you? Two years ago, I was a little bit of a time, so I don't know how many years ago I was a little bit of a time. So since I was fired only after two months, I have no idea what they've been up to. I was a little bit of a time, but I didn't see it in my life, but I didn't see it in my life. So that middle school boy must be an adult now, and I don't know if he's watched the film. <laughs> Put that out there. If he's out there, we want to know what he thinks. Uh, well, by now, I mean, you opened um, uh, Back Home in Korea, and it, this is a huge, huge, huge hit. Something like 2.75 million admissions on your opening weekend. Now Oscar, Oscars are in your sights right now. You know, it's like you're on the road to the Oscars, right? But I believe it was in Cannes when you won the Palme d'Or. You you took the award and you kneeled and you presented it to your actor, Song. Why was that? 그 뭐랄까 제가 그분한테 바치는 어떤 나무주연상 같은 거 최고의 배우다. So it was my own version of the best actor award that I wanted to present to him. <laughs> I truly meant it. Um, I also wonder what you thought of, um, I don't know if you guys have seen out there these shirts that were made after Cannes that say Bong Door. <laughs> Bong Door. What was your first reaction when you saw those? My last name, Bong, is quite very loud in South Korea. When I was there, 초등학교 때부터 그성 때문에 놀림을 많이 당했어요. I got teased a lot ever since elementary school because of my last name. 봉을 섞은 뭐 이상한 별명도 많았고, 곧좀 힘든 시기를 보냈죠 그성 때문에. I had various strange nicknames using the last name Bong, and so I suffered throughout my childhood. And it never ends. Actually, I didn't know that the, the bong has uh, some specific meaning. Originally, <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know, but the, the, Tom Kim, my friend, when he distributed the, 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 the host the, many years ago, he, he told me, your last name is something, and then he actually tried to give me a gift, bong. He gave me a bong, and I was So he gave me a bong, and I was like, so I was thinking about going back to Korea and going to So I was quite worried when I took it back to Korea at the airport, um, but it was a great gift nonetheless. And now you've earned a gold one. Yeah. Uh, I want to ask you about working with each other as brothers. How do you... I mean, he's described you as... As like a brother. <laughs> so we are like brothers and sisters. I don't know if you guys have seen 
하여튼 매일 같이 뭘 찍어 나가는 건데 작품에 대한 관점이나 이런 게잘 맞는 것 같아요. 일단은. So when I work with him, it does feel very comfortable, uh, like he's my own brother. But we actually don't talk a lot on set. It's not as if we sit, sit across a table and have serious meetings about the script. I think it's just that we understand each other very well and we share very similar perspectives with the same materials. 그리고 제 영화가 가진 약간 이상한 면들이 이상하거나 불편한 면들이 있어요. 시나리오의 곳곳에 그런 것들이 송강호라는 필터를 또는 앰프라고 해야 되나? 앰플리파이어를 거치면 되게 더 뭔가 더 진짜 같고 리얼한 것이 돼서 관객들한테 가서 닿게 되는 것 같아요. 그래서 관객들을 더 설득할 수 있는 거죠. So with my with my scripts, there's always these uh, strange and uncomfortable moments spread out um, across my films, and I think once those moments go through this filter or amplifier uh, that is Song Kang Ho, um, they become more realistic. They feel more real as they reach the audience. So I feel like they gain this persuasive power through uh, through song. And with this character, uh, the head of the Kim family. What did you know he was capable of, Song was capable of, when you were writing this for him? <웃음> 그, 첫 페이지를 쓸 때, 뭐, 라스트 페이지까지 다 완벽하게 계획이 안돼 있을 때도 있죠. 또는 뭐, 마더처럼 마지막 장면이 먼저 머릿속에 있고, 그 앞에 두 시간이 오로지 거기를 향해서 가는 것처럼 쓰는 경우도 있고, 어쨌든 마지막 그 하이막스 시퀀스가 처음부터 머릿속에 정리돼 있지는 않은 상태로 썼어요. 기생충은. So sometimes when I write the first page, I have no plans for the last page. And sometimes as in mother, um, I come up with the last scene first and write the, the two hours that come before so that uh, the narrative propels towards that moment. With Parasite, um, I didn't really have clear ideas on the last climax when I started writing. 이제 송강호라는 배우가 이 역할을 연기한다라는 거를 이미 전제를 하고 배우 본인과도 얘기를 했고 그러고서 써나가니까 점점 더 과감해진 면이 있죠. 그러면서 마음껏 쓰고 싶은 대로 썼던 것 같아요 마지막까지. 그 이성균 이제 그 급증 사장님 CEO 캐릭터 그러잖아요. 선을 넘지 말라고. 근데 송강호와 함께 이렇게 선을 같이 넘는 느낌. 마지막. 크라이메틱 시퀀스에서 정말 선을 넘어버린다고 생각해요. So because I wrote this script um, with Song already in mind and I already discussed the story with him, I became more bolder as I wrote. Um, I just wrote however as I wanted to write. And in the film, uh, at one point, the character of Mr. Park talks about not crossing the line. But this film felt like I was crossing that line with, um, with Song together. And of course, you really see that moment in the climax. Um, I wanted to add that we will have some time for uh, questions from the audience. So if you have a question, just get it ready. We'll 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 get to them. Um, but we have to we have to know. There's, I mean, the the film that you made with him in 2003, Memories of Murder, recently came back into the news. Um, it's based on a true story, based on true unsolved serial killings. In, uh, in Korea, and recently the police announced that they believe they caught the suspect. How, how, do, you, how do you feel? And what was your reaction to hearing that news? My heart was very complicated. The David Fincher, Zodiac, Netflix에 뭐 마인드 헌터 이런 시리즈도 있잖아요. 이게 한국에서는 되게 한국 사람들에게 되게 큰 상처가 된 트라우마가 된 그런 사건이에요. 그래서 저도 영화를 만들 때 되게 좀 신중했었고 그 범인에 대한 생각을 많이 했어요. 어떻게 생긴 사람일까? 응. <웃음> So I felt very complicated to hear that news. Um, this serial, these serial killings were, uh, they were a horrendous incident that happened in Korea. And of course there are films like Zodiac, um, and there's that uh, 
Netflix series Mind, Mindhunter. Uh, but in Korea, this incident was a big trauma to our society. And so when I, when I made the film, I was very curious and I also thought a lot about this murderer. I wondered what he looks like and all these things. During screenwriting, actually, during this research period, I met so many people. Uh, people who were around the, the, so the detective and the journalist at the time. Quite many people I met, but only one guy who I, kept, I could not meet is, of course, the mother. So, 생각을 많이 했어. 그그몇 년간 그 사람에 대해서 정말 생각을 많이 했었는데 이제 얼굴을 보게 됐어요. 제가 지난 주에 사진을 그래서 어, 더 이상의 어떤 저도 좀 시간을 가져야 그 감정에 대해서 얘기를 할수 있을 것 같고 일단은 경찰 분들에게 박수를 보내고 싶어요. 끈질긴 어떤 노력으로 찾아냈다는 것에 박수를 보내드리고 싶은 겁니다. So for several years I had so many thoughts on on this murderer and finally last week I was able to see a photo of his face and I think I need more time to really explain my emotions uh, from that. But right now I would just like to um, applaud the the police force for their endless effort to find uh, the culprit. 그 당시 한국에 무슨 시네마테크가 없었던 상태였고 지금은 잘 되고 있죠. 그때는 없었어요. 그리고 뭐 DVD나 인터넷도 없던 때라서 그냥 되게 처절한 방법으로 열심히 영화를 보는 그런 동안이었는데. So I did create a film club during my university years, and at the time there weren't many cinema texts in Korea, and we didn't really have DVD or internet either. So we were uh, we found very desperate measures to watch films. 그리고 아, 한마디로 뭐 불법 복제 비디오도 봤었죠 영화들을 아, 그 유명한 명작과 클래식이랑 뭐 이런 뭐 여러 나라 영화들. So to put it shortly, we watched all the uh, world classics through pirated video tapes. <웃음> And we, we in the uh, in the university we organized some very small film festival. Actually, it's a illegal video copy festival. <웃음> I, I did some. 네, 영어 자막, 영어도 못하는 인간이 무슨 영어 자막도 넣고 그래서 어쨌든 그 막, 아니, 한글 자막, 뭐, 스파이크리 영화에서 뭐 그때, 네, 뭐, 약간 이렇게, 그, 나쁜, 뭐, 욕, 그런 것도 많이 배웠어요, 그 자막 자막 하면서. <웃음> <laughs> so at the time, um, my English wasn't that great, but I still added Korean subtitles uh, to all the uh, English movies, and I remember learning a lot of really bad curse words through Spike Lee. <laughs> I made the, the Korean subtitle of the, the Do the Right Thing. <laughs> so many funny, interesting words. I didn't know that such words existed. I didn't know that such words existed. I was like, wow, these words. <laughs> and I was very happy when I first met uh, Giancarlo Esposito, the actor, who, who he, he was in the Do the Right Thing. Yeah, so, so that after the Grand Bell, so when I told him I did that in college, he gave me a very big hug. He's a very strong man. <laughs> Filmmaking-wise, there's some collaborators that you work with on uh, Parasite who have 